Zambians must be protected in their Zambia. I don't even know where to start from, but I, uh, I'm very angry right now, and uh, I hope you are angry too because I think it's only right that we should be angry about certain things that are happening in our country. Uh, oftentimes, I don't like to discuss anything that sounds like it's politics or anything like that. I don't know if you want to call it politics. For me, I have, I'm I'm calling it Zambia. I just want to talk about my country. Uh, a country where I was born, a country where I got my NRC, a country where I got my birth certificate, a country where my parents raised me. This is the only country I have. In the words of the late president of Zambia, Michael Sata, God has stopped creating countries. He has given us all these countries and for us, for me, Zambia is the country that God gave me and said, you okay, Kalapa, together with these other people, your brothers, your sisters, your neighbors, the community, everybody else. This is the only Zambia that we have. And if we lose our birthright, if we lose this Zambia, where do we go? Nowhere. So, it is for this reason that I want to say Zambians must be protected in their Zambia. Zambians must be respected in their Zambia. And Zambians must enjoy their rights in their country. And I'm saying this because when I think about it, I travel to so many countries. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for giving me the opportunity to travel to so many countries. But every country I travel to, when I go there, I humble myself because it's not my country. I humble myself because in the first place I have been given the privilege of entering that country meaning that the owners of that land have been nice and kind to me to allow me to be in their country. Now once I'm there, I can't go there and start oppressing, you know, the owners of that land. I can't go there and start oppressing the locals. I don't have the right to do that. If they give me an opportunity to work in their country and earn an income, there is no way I can start doing it in a manner where I am putting their own people, the people of that country, in bondage. I'm holding them hostage. I'm mistreating and ill-treating them. No, there is no way I can do that in, in another country. But what's wrong with our country, Zambia? Why should people come in our country and then take over our country in a manner that they ill-treat us, the locals, What's, what's wrong with us? Why should our leaders allow other people to mistreat us? And just when you expect that your leaders are going to stand for you, they stand with those people that are ill-treating you, the locals. Situations where Zambians who are working for foreign nationals are held bondage. They are held in places where they cannot be allowed to go and visit their families. Is that correct? And then when someone who is vested with the power to speak for the people tries to speak for the people, that is the person you start to castigate. Is that how it's supposed to be? Is that how we're going to live? No ways. No ways. This is not the country I would love my children to inherit. And this is not the country I, you would love your children to inherit. I don't think so. Unless you are so comfortable that you know that Nangofia Pena in Enabana because I've invested elsewhere. Only when you have that kind of money can you be that careless. Maybe mweva kwa tasani ndalama. Maybe mweva kwa tasani ndalama. Mweva mweva karasu minisha ifi haifu kukuchitika. Because you know that na mkwa taku mbiyo kwa mwinga shintiri loko mwinga butuki lako. But for us, this is the only Zambia that we have. And we've got to, we've got to safeguard it. It's the only inheritance that our children can have. But will our children inherit a country where they even inherit debt that they don't even know who contracted it. They come and inherit a country where they are enslaved because leaders had allowed other people from outside to come and take over and be given an advantage over the locals. 
Is that a country we, we're looking for? No, there is no way. How can people come to your country in the name of being an investor? They invest in your country, maybe in like a business that the locals are supposed to be doing and start competing with, their own, with, with, with the locals in a small business and you call it investment. And it's not just that, even when they're given that opportunity, then they start selecting who enters their business premises by saying, no, you can't enter because you are black or because you are Zambian. In my country, I can't even enter a place and enjoy the privileges or the services in that place. Maybe you're even going to pay if it's in a barbershop, you're going to pay. If it's in a shop, you're going to pay for whatever things that you're going to, to, to buy in there. Elo by South Kenya, no, you were to Ingiri, Panturi Mozambian, Mucharo Chove. Who does that? No ways, guys. No ways. Please, don't tell me that we are being colonized again. Don't tell me that we are selling our country to other people outside. No ways. We can't go back to those days. No, we can't go back to those days. If this is colonialization, or colonialism, or colonial rule, or whatever it is that you want to call it, I don't want to be a part of it, and I know that many other people out there are with me and they don't want to be a part of it. You can't sell your country to other people to just come and take over and they start mistreating your own people and you're there watching and you're there supporting them. Now they're even reporting in their countries in the news and celebrating the fact that, you know, the fact that we are apologizing to people who are supposed to be apologizing to us. What do you call that, guys? No ways. No ways. I have to speak out. I don't care who's going to think, no, Walanda of nobody she wa opposition. What opposition? Some of us don't even have anything to do with any political party. No, 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 no. What, what is the constitution for? What are freedoms for? If people can speak up, let, let people speak up and speak out, you know? And you're supposed to stand with them because the things that they're speaking about are justifiable. No, guys, it hurts me. It does. We are such a rich country. We are such a rich continent. I think while Andirati, Africa is not poor, it is poorly managed. Tabe pere. I'm telling you, we're not a poor continent. We're a very rich continent, rich in natural resources. We have so many things that go out there to beautify and build other people's countries. And these resources, we have them, but we don't know how to utilize them. Why, where are we going wrong as Africans? I come back to my country, Zambia. We have so many minerals, and we're just busy giving them away. We have all these natural resources, good things, copper, cobalt. Now we are hearing of gold. Are Zambians enjoying? Are Zambians privy to the deals that our leaders are going into to know where these resources are going? Are we benefiting? How can I benefit? Do I even have any advantage over a person from outside when it comes to benefiting from the local resources? These are the kind of things, these are the kind of questions we should be asking ourselves as Zambians to say, Nga ifwe, tukadira kodi iladi, tukasarula kodi iladi, tukumfako wino lui sapafin tu fiesu, efyo le satu pe. Like I said earlier, God gave us this country. It is the only one we have. Whatever resources are here must be enjoyed by all of us. We should enjoy our rights and we should enjoy our resources, not people from elsewhere having an advantage over us when it comes to enjoying our resources, enjoying contracts and all these things. I'm not even trying to be political. I'm just saying the truth and everybody knows. Please, please, please to our leaders, please listen to our cries. Listen to the plea of your people. If you're watching me right now, fellow Zambian, wherever you are, Whichever city you are in, in, you are in, whichever part of the country you are in, whichever part of the world you are in, I challenge you, the same way back in the 50s and the 60s, our freedom fighters fought against the servitude that we experienced. It is time for you now to become a freedom fighter. My question is, are you going to be the next Kenneth Kaunda, the next Kapwepwe, the next Grey Zulu? Nkumbula, the people that fought for you, for your freedom. Because 
clearly you are beginning to lose your freedom because people from outside are being favored over you and your leaders are supporting them instead of supporting you. What do we call that? I choose to be a freedom fighter. I will fight for my freedom. I pray you fight for yours. I pray you fight for your family's freedom. Because if I have my freedom, be it financial or economic freedom, and you don't have yours, then mine is still meaningless because I'm still at risk of you coming to grab that freedom from me because you don't have yours. So let's all be a freedom fighter for our country, and I pray that our leaders can just listen to us. And please, please, reclaim our freedom from these people that are ill-treating your own people. You are our leaders. You are the only ones we have at this particular time. And you've got to look at our plight. Thank you.